Good afternoon. Wow, here we are. Thank you so much for being here with us on this really exciting day. My name is Jacqueline Edmondson and I serve as the 14th president of the University of Southern Maine and it is such an exciting time to be president and to lead this university. We are thrilled to be opening the USM's first ever residence hall on the Portland campus. Okay.
This long awaited milestone marks a turning point in our university's history, providing our students with a much needed opportunity to remain in university housing as they continue their academic journeys. While our first year students will continue to be housed on the Gorham campus, we expect that Portland Commons will become a hub for continuing students, a place where they can learn and grow and remain connected with the university. And it is not only USM undergraduate students who will find a home in the Portland Commons. At a time when fewer and fewer universities are able to offer graduate housing, we are committed to providing a place where those who are pursuing postgraduate degrees at USM can flourish. Additionally, the Portland Commons will offer housing to students enrolled at Maine Law. Some of them are here with us today. I'm so happy to meet them. Creating opportunities for interdisciplinary synergies outside the classroom. We are pleased to welcome students from Southern Maine Community College through the Southern Maine Pathways Program. These are students who are completing associate degrees in majors that are also offered at the University of Southern Maine. And in addition to providing them with a place to live, we hope that by welcoming them into our community, we can ease their transition from the community college to the University of Southern Maine. Great cities are known for great universities, and nobody here can deny that Portland is a great city, a destination for people from all over the world to work, to visit, and to study. By establishing the first residence hall in Portland, the University of Southern Maine elevates the city's stature as a college town where students from multiple educational institutions can come together in a community of academic inquiry and excellence. We will transform our campus in the coming years to a place that welcomes and serves all Mainers, and Portland Commons is only the beginning. With the opening of the McGoldrick Center for Career and Student Success, the upcoming ground groundbreaking on our new Center for the Arts, and other campus initiatives, we are welcoming our neighbors in Portland and beyond to join us at the University of Southern Maine. From members of the business community, artists, entrepreneurs, innovators, and creators, there are opportunities for everyone to engage with us, to find out what makes the University of Southern Maine excellent, and to partner with us in the years to come as we grow and build the stature and reputation of this great university. There are a number of people who deserve to be recognized on this momentous day, including so mem many members of the USM community and the USM leadership team. Too many to name, but I will ask that you raise your hand or stand and otherwise be recognized if you've been part of this project um, over, the, over the past many months. This remarkable project would not have been possible without the incredible hard work of so many of the many, many members of the University of Maine system as well, many of whom are here today to celebrate this milestone with us. I wish to extend my sincere thanks to Chancellor Malloy, who is here today. Without his support, this project would not have been completed. And we'll also be inviting Chair Riley to speak today. And I want to also extend my thanks to her for her wonderful support. And Trustee Flood is with us as well. Thank you for making time to visit with us today. And I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge um, former President Glenn Cummings, who is here with us today. He got this ball rolling and handed it off beautifully to me, and I thank you so much for your, for your great support, um, and particularly through the transition between our presidencies. I will note that the green area that you see behind you is called the Cummings Green. It is note, it has um, represented donations from people who wanted to acknowledge and uh, memorialize Glenn's presidency. And I think what I've heard is that people are calling it the Glen. So <laughs> you can walk out there and enjoy that space, Glen. So this building is already such a special place. Um, and I want to be sure that we thank um, USM's partners in Capstone, PCC, SMRT, and the city of Portland 
there are so many contributions that have really led us to this moment. And so thank you all for being involved. And now I'm pleased to hand the microphone over to Aaron Witham, who was the USM's Director of Sustainability, and he will speak a little bit about the design of this particular residence hall, which is really quite unique. So Aaron. I'm proud to announce that this building will soon be certified as the second largest passive house building at a university in the United States. And it will be one of the top 10 largest overall in the country. With this project, the University of Southern Maine has demonstrated that regional public universities can make major strides toward building environmentally friendly buildings if they have the courage to do so. We don't have to limit ourselves to baby steps anymore. We can do this at a big scale. The technology is here, it works, and it pays off financially. This residence hall will use less than 50% of the energy of a normal building built to code. And it will do that by several things. By being heavily insulated, having airtight joints, having a continuous thermal barrier, minimizing thermal bridging, featuring energy efficient appliances, and using state-of-the-art heat pumps. But being environmentally friendly doesn't mean that you have to sacrifice comfort. Our students will enjoy the highest standards for indoor air quality, which are required of the passive house design. And this is a great benefit in the pandemic era. And our students will be able to control their own heat and cooling within their living quarters, something that I didn't have when I was in college. Additionally, they'll enjoy insulation from the loud sounds of the city. So we're not sacrificing comfort by building this way. We also don't have to sacrifice financially. We estimate that the premium to build to passive house certification costs us approximately $4 million for this project, but this will be paid off in 15 years or less from utility savings. And then beyond that, we will save over $270,000 per year on our energy bills, which exemplifies our fiduciary responsibility to the state of Maine and to the future generations of our great university. And not to be left out, our new McGoldrick Center for Career and Student Success across the way is on track to earn LEED Gold certification, which is a very comprehensive green building standard in its own right. And I'm happy to report that our new parking garage across the street is going to serve as a showcase for sustainable transportation. It features the largest hub of electric vehicle charging stations anywhere in the state of Maine with 58 level two plugs and dedicated parking spaces. It also features the largest collection of indoor secure bicycle parking spaces anywhere in the state with 250. We are well on our way to our goal of being a carbon neutral university by the year 2040. And none of this would be possible without committed leadership at the university, including both former President Cummings and current President Edmondson. And it wouldn't be possible without our incredible building team, including Capstone, PC Construction, Elkis Menfredi, SMRT, Woodard and Curran, Desmond, Winton Scott, Stephen Winter Associates, VHB, Bernstein Shore, and many others. It takes a village and it certainly did in this case. Thank you. It is now my pleasure to welcome to the podium the Chancellor of the University of Maine System, Daniel Malloy. I, uh, getting a payback in 15 years is pretty darn good, and saving $275,000 a year is, is more frosting on the cake. So it's a great presentation, and. Uh, for all of the folks who were involved in the design of this building, thank you ever so much for steering it in the right direction. Before I go any further, let me uh, recognize Ryan Fecto, who is now the Senior Advisor of the Governor's Office of Policy, Innovation, and Future. Uh, great to have you with us, and thank you for your service and other capacities previously uh, in the legislature. 
want to recognize uh, Nathan Carlo, uh, who I got to know when he was a student here and was a representative to the uh, Board of Trustees and uh, uh, very much appreciated that leadership role as a student that he played. And it's great to have him serving the people of Maine in the legislature. Great to be with you. Uh, Rebecca Millett had accepted an invitation to be here, but unfortunately was not feeling well today. But I, because she's not feeling well, I thought I'd give her a shout out anyway. So uh, 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 we appreciate uh, her support as well. Uh, and Representative uh, Rickett, thank you very much for being with us and, and for your service to the people of, of Maine. Uh, the University of Southern Maine, um, uh, with the additions that uh, we celebrate today, uh, obviously can't ignore the Student Center, which is right around the corner, uh, or this great building uh, bringing students to this campus to live uh, for the first time, uh, or a modern uh, parking facility that will allow us to meet the, not only the needs of this population, but of uh, uh, the growth that we hope to experience at this university in the not too distant future. Uh, and of course, the addition of the Arts Center uh, will contribute to that effort as well. Um, and uh, uh, I want to thank Glenn Cummings for his leadership uh, uh, in championing, uh, with many others, these projects, but his particular leadership in uh, bringing uh, this about. Uh, and Jackie, you haven't done a bad job uh, keeping the, the, the ball rolling. So congratulations on, on th uh, this success and other successes you've had in your very first year with us. I very much appreciate working with you um, as well. The city of Portland is a great American city, and uh, we knew that years ago. I knew that when I used to come up here and play rugby tournaments, um, but the rest of the world is, is now discovering that. Uh, and this addition of these beds uh, on this campus, as well as maintaining our beds uh, out in Gorham, are very important developments towards growing this institution once again. There's no doubt in my mind that we have the faculty uh, and the experiences that people are, young people are searching or that other uh, folks will come back to for uh, their graduate degrees or perhaps to complete a program that they had started four, five, 10, or 40 years ago and earned their degree. Everything we can do that makes our, bill, our campuses more attractive is an important investment. Uh, the reality is that unfortunately our system uh, had underinvested in itself over a long period of time. But this is a champion event for reinvestment in the institutions that we care about and that the people of Maine rely on for the preparation of their workforce uh, for the future. Congratulations to all who are here to celebrate and all who have played a role in bringing this day, this building, these buildings uh, together for us. Um, and congratulations to all uh, who have participated uh, in that endeavor. I'm going to say congratulations to you. Our next uh, speaker is Trish Riley, who um, I've taught here, um, uh, uh, studied here, uh, has been a member of the family here. Um, but I, I also celebrate her not just because she's my boss um, and I know enough to celebrate my boss, but, uh, but the reality is that she has had a distinguished career uh, throughout a public life. Uh, her commitments to the people of Maine and the people of the United States of America and bringing ab ab about, about uh, fair insurance and uh, Medicare uh, uh, accessibility uh, are, are legendary uh, in the annals of uh, Maine history. Uh, what we appreciate is uh, the, the reality that she, uh, uh, as, as difficult as I am to work for and work with, I should say, um, um, uh, uh, I work for her, I should straighten that out, that's what I meant to say, um, uh, is uh, her, her history of having worked with multiple administrations uh, in the state of Maine over an elongated period for someone who looks so young. I just don't want to say that. Uh, but, but I also want to say this, that completing uh, her first five-year term, now in her second five-year term, now in her second year as uh, chair of the board, uh, has been a great experience for me uh, to have her leadership and her knowledge uh, to be shared uh, with me and uh, with uh, the team at the uh, system, uh, and I'm sure has benefited the president, the new president here as well. So I will turn the program over to Trish Riley, the chair of the trustees of our system. Well, 
Thank you, Chancellor. That just proves that I'm older than everyone else in the room. <laughs> but President Edmonds had created this problem. Remind, you, you mentioned history. And when I think about, I have had the privilege of being close on the, in the front row of, of watching the evolution of the University of Southern Maine, largely through my affiliation with, with the Muskie School. And it is amazing to me to think about what this place looked like not that long ago. And indeed, Portland was a little sleepier then too. It wasn't the great city it is today, not in the same kinds of ways we imagine it. But I, I remember full well, this was a couple of buildings and a bunch of warehouses. That was the Portland campus. And then the great moment when the International Harvester Program in 1985 became Woodbury Center, a makeshift, it wasn't a perfect place for a student center, but it worked. Soon after, a bakery that was, I think, a plumbing supply business became Glickman. And quickly on its heels, new buildings, shocker, new buildings, um, Wish Camper and Hannaford. But today, today feels like a climax. Today is a campus. The creation of this facility with Glenn's early insight and vision and your leadership is extraordinary. And it, for the first time, it really feels like a campus. It is a college town. And it, I really think it, we've completed a, an important part of the transition. Now, several boards and several presidents have worked through to get to this place. It's not easy to spend money when you don't have much. Um, and there are those, I suspect, who say, who say, why spend on a new building when the headwinds of change in higher education are before us, we don't know what's happening, there are many competing needs for scarce resources. Why do it? And I'll tell you, that's the question the board asked the chancellor, President Clemmings, President Edmonds, and the chancellor would say over and over again. <laughs> and we, we heard the case and became its strongest advocates for, I think, three reasons. The first is a fairly simple one. The state of Maine creates bonding capacity for the University of Maine system that allows us to build facilities. It's not money that's available for other kinds of things. Secondly, residence halls pay for themselves. Students pay room and board. And imagine the potential of this facility. Think of, think of summertime in Maine. Think of all the, the hotels are full and they're really expensive. Think of the opportunities that this, this facility will have for summer programming and to help the communities around here with camps and all kinds of revenue generating activities. But most importantly, this is about students. This is about investing in our students, making a statement to our students, we care, we try to do our best for you. And we know, and we learned from President Cummings, that wonderful places to live are important to recruiting and retaining students. So we look forward to the effect of this building in, in doing just that. And more importantly, I think, more importantly, I think, is that it's one thing to build great beds for students, but this is something different. USM has a long and proud tradition of, of creating Maine's workforce, does a great job. New programs, new developments to, to really respond to business needs. But education's more than that. Education's the people you live with. Education is learning from others. Education is community college people, USM folks, law students, all together learning from each other. Education is about the, the, the clubs and organizations you participate in. And that will be here in the McGoldrick Center, a center of student success. This is about student success. It's a critically important investment. And my most important job is to step down because it's time for the students to welcome, a, to cut the ribbon, to open this new facility, and to really give a place for the vision that President Edmonds has really created for all of us on the board of what it means to be a comprehensive regional university. And it's a great new chapter. So thank you all and let's open this place. <laughs> Thank you so much, Chair Riley. I'm going to ask the students to come forward. They um, are they joined us today in the midst of moving in. So as soon as we cut the ribbon, they have some boxes that they're taking upstairs. So I sincerely appreciate that they are are here and ready to help us cut this ribbon. So I'm come this way. Okay.
concludes our event for today. Um, I do understand that there are tours that will be offered, and so if the folks who are leading tours can help us to know where those may, may be, we can uh, proceed from there. Okay, thank you. All right, we'll follow the leader for tours. Yeah, we have to carry boxes. Yeah, you can carry boxes. <laughs>